Welcome to History of Health Information Technology in the U.S., History of CPOE, and E-Prescribing. This is Lecture B, History of E-Prescribing. This lecture will discuss the history of electronic prescribing, or E-Prescribing. The objectives for this unit, History of CPOE and E-Prescribing, are to discuss the evolving capabilities of CPOE and e-prescribing systems and to discuss the impact of these systems on patient safety and quality. The building of momentum for CPOE in the inpatient setting got the concept of electronic prescribing rolling into the outpatient setting. As mounting evidence of the benefits of CPOE in the inpatient setting was circulating, the outpatient setting became of increasing interest as an area to automate. It has been estimated that two-thirds of encounters in the outpatient setting result in a prescription. Furthermore, given that 75% of all physicians practice in small group settings, for the national goals of quality improvement to be realized, e-prescribing must permeate into the medical practice setting. Compared with the growing scholarly literature of CPOE in inpatient settings, articles on e-prescribing in outpatient settings were far more rare, but the media and trade press helped generate a lot of attention to this technology. So what exactly do we mean by e-prescribing? Some have considered a prescription entered electronically, but then printed to be e-prescribing but that's probably not getting to exactly what e-prescribing is. What about electronically ordered prescriptions that are transmitted electronically but then printed? That's probably not e-prescribing either. E-prescribing is more than the mere electronic entry or transmission of a prescription. It encompasses the secure, real-time electronic delivery to providers and pharmacists of patient-specific information. The information may include a patient's insurance eligibility, or what benefits they are entitled to, or whether or not there are drug interactions with a prescription being ordered, any warning or dose adjustments that are recommended, and it may include medication history, and the availability of generic medications. There are two main types of e-prescribing systems, those that are standalone or those that are integrated into an electronic health record. Those that are standalone are typically less complex to install. They typically cost less, and originally they were seen as a way to slowly move physicians into full EHR systems. E-prescription systems that are a part of the electronic health records systems are really the ideal way to take advantage of the decision support by utilizing other clinical information available in the electronic health record for effective, safe, and high-quality prescribing. Researchers Dean Sittig and William Stead published a key article that summarizes the history of e-prescribing before the mid-90s. They report that 1977, was the advent of the first e-prescribing system. It was described in an article by Levitt and Garside. The first such system was relatively basic compared to today's standards. The system was developed to capture prescriptions entered in coded form. For example, a physician could enter in the first two letters of a common drug name, followed by T for tablets, S for solution, or C for cream. Next, the dose was entered as a number. A basic prescription order that included a drug name, number of tablets, and strength could be entered very rapidly with only a few keystrokes. As you can imagine, this approach was a time saver for expert or experienced users, but most novice users found the system confusing or hard to learn. Several years later, in 1985, Brown and colleagues published an article about a new system that could handle very detailed electronic prescriptions very efficiently. This system allowed doctors to scroll through a list of drug names, doses, and routes very quickly using arrow keys. 
While such a system seems intuitive to us now, back then, it was a very innovative approach given the early development of computer user interfaces. By the late 1980s, a concern had developed among physicians that automation would result in quote-unquote cookbook medicine. The term cookbook medicine was a negative term describing how doctors would follow computerized recipes of how to treat patients. This approach was viewed negatively as an erosion of the art and science of medicine. In the early 1990s, decision support features began appearing in CPOE and e-prescribing systems. Decision support systems were very basic at the time. For example, the computer may have reminded the physicians to check for pregnancy if the patient was female and of reproductive age. During the 1990s, several isolated implementations of e-prescription systems continued, mostly in academic settings. By the end of the 1990s, an estimated 2% of outpatient prescriptions were captured electronically. A year later, at the turn of the century, an estimated 5% of physicians prescribed electronically. And several years after that, in 2003, only really tech-savvy physicians were e-prescribing somewhat regularly, but still at a relatively low rate of only 19%. Those that were e-prescribing were more likely to be generalists, practicing in an academic center. In 2003, the U.S. Congress passed the Medicare Modernization Act, or MMA, which sought to encourage doctors to e-prescribe by 2006. When the MMA passed, there still wasn't much scientific evidence on the impact of e-prescribing, especially compared to CPOE, where much more evidence was present. Nevertheless, the research evidence that did exist on e-prescribing generally demonstrated a sizable positive effect. By 2004, more doctors overall were e-prescribing, but rates were still fairly low and in the range of 5 to 18 percent. Over time, advances in computer and communication technologies made the need to sync devices in a cradle unnecessary. Syncing refers to the pre-wireless Internet need to synchronize handheld devices by connecting them to Internet-connected desktop computers so that updated information can be loaded to the portable device. The advent of wireless Internet connections contributed to increasing e-prescribing adoption rates because many physicians used handheld computers or palm devices to e-prescribe. Importantly, by 2005, the vast majority of pharmacies were able to receive electronic prescriptions, especially the large chain pharmacies. When Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast in 2005, electronic prescription data stored in pharmacy computers were accessible to doctors and pharmacists who were treating patients displaced from their homes into neighboring states. As available technologies made it easier and easier for doctors to afford e-prescription systems, adoption rates began to pick up. A study using 2008 data found that almost 27% of doctors in Florida were using e-prescription systems. Furthermore, those with such systems reported that the majority of their prescriptions were entered into the computers they had. Seeking to further encourage doctors to e-prescribe, the High Tech Act of 2009 represented the largest federal commitment to promote this technology. Specifically, the Act makes bonus payments available to physicians who meaningfully use health information technologies. E-prescribing was included in the definition of meaningful use. By 2014, as a result of the meaningful use incentives, 86% of physicians were doing e-prescribing. This concludes History of CPOE and E-Prescribing. In summary, CPOE and E-Prescribing have been around for more than 30 years, indeed, almost 40 years for CPOE. The industry has learned a lot about the numerous benefits of electronic order entry, as well as the potential drawbacks. 
More importantly, we have learned much more about how to plan for and properly implement such systems. We will likely continue to learn additional best practices now that the adoption of CPOE and e-prescribing has risen in response to recent federal incentives.